Start. So, hello everyone from my side. My name is Bernd Loder. As you introduced, introduced. So sorry for the delay of your coffee break, but I don't reach my second flight on Sunday. So yeah, that's the reason why I'm here. So uh, I will the hydrogen embrittlement of the martensitic carbon steels at high high hydrogen pressure. Uh, we will investigate in, in high stories. We are we are with the Modern University in the open on rock package four. That's materials and corrosion. Yeah, to the outline. I will come to the introduction, materials, experimental, and then to the results and discussion, and that's the least to the conclusions. So, uh, when we start to the introduction, so the underground storage and the use of the hydrogen are become more and more increasingly important of the in the in the context of green energy. And there's the problem of the hydrogen embrittlement. And to, and to evaluate the hydrogen suitability of, uh, therefore, we use the high pressure outer cloud test where we carry it out to simulate the condition close to the underground gas storage. Yeah. And the aim of the work was to determine how much hydrogen is observed in the, ca in the carbon steels and how this affects the cracking behavior of the steel. Yeah. There we have some corrosion species in the underground. They could be carbon dioxide, H2S, hi just hydrogen or salt water as known also as brine. Uh, the gas for gas storage, they can we can use aquifers, salt caverns, also depleted fields. So in that could be the corrosion species. I, I investigated the API L80 with two heat treatments, just the quenched one. There we austenite at 900 grad Celsius for 10 minutes and then water quenched. And also the second one is the quenched and tempered, the same austenization, but afterwards the tempering at fi uh, 580 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. When we came to the microstructure, we investigated two agings. The for the quenched one, here we see the martensitic ones. Here, the the, the neater aging is for for the for the average grain size granulase. And also same investigation here. You see the magnification of 300, and you see better on the 1000. And the quenched one, we see 100% martensitic microstructure, and here we see the tempered martensite. When we come to the experimental part, so we, 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 st we stress the string. Uh, we, we, we compressing the spring so that the specimen is under stress. We will do it at 90% of the yield strength. And we put them together with our hydrogen sample in our with, with Deflon parts into the autoclave. We will we will put them in a box and fluid the box with argon and also the autoclave, and then we will evacuate them with a vacuum pump and we will beat them three times that we are surely oxygen free. Uh, we will also do that with with the solution that also the solution is oxygen free. Then we will put the the, the different gases into the autoclave. We will regulate that uh, with the pressure gauge. If there is a Electrolyte presence, also er, er, anyways, is the uh, electrolyte presence or not? We will put it in the, the oven. And if this uh, electrolyte presence, we will rotate them at one, one rotation per minute. And afterwards, we will go to into the DDS, it's the thermal desorption spectroscopy, and we will measure the total hydrogen content. Yeah, now we'll come to the, uh, the results and discussion. So the good thing in front, so for the time to failure, for the quenched and tempered one, no failure occurred under any conditions. So uh, when we come to the 120 degrees compared to the room temperature, there is more hydrogen uptake. If it's just pure hydrogen, it's the higher temperature, and that's the same like it should like the, the theory. But that's, that's not more the any more the case when it's the H2S present, then it's near the same. So when we compare that to the, with, with an electrolyte, then it then it's the same effect compared to the just dry hydrogen. 
and when it's H2S and rotating, we, we, s we will see that at room temperature, the most critical one. Yeah, as I told you before, no fracture occurred, but we see that here, as a it's the hydrogen with an electrolyte, there is no localized damage compared. When we see here, we see clearly the localized damage. There's the same sample, just two different uh, places lo located from the sample size. And yeah, and when we go to a higher magnification, we see here a, locali a localized damage with this also with H2S and an electrolyte present. So now when we compare the, the, the quenched and tempered one versus the quenched one, uh, at higher temperature, at poor hydrogen, we will see that the, that's the, the quenched and tempered one takes, the hydrogen uptake is much higher as this one, but no failure occurred. Compared when we go when we, when we lower the temperature, when we come back to room temperature, then we see a fracture at the quenched one. And also, at, as we promised first, at high temperature and a presence of H2S, we also get a fracture and a higher hydrogen uptake compared to the quenched and tempered one. And when we go into the detail, uh, by the fracture with the, with the most severe condition in this case, we don't see any detail of the, of the fracture because of the iron sulfide layer. So it makes no, no more sense to go in detail in this case. So that's just a an, an microscope, a normal. And uh, here we, 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 we take the, the dry condition at, at hydrogen at room temperature. And here we see good, here, uh, here is the starting point of the fracture. And we when, when we go in, in detail, and when we go in detail on the, on the fracture surface, so there are different parts separated into separate parts. And, and the light blue, the light blue one, it's a clear hydrogen fracture, and in this area, there's the ductile and brittle area are present in the same in the same way. And we do that at different magnification. At that's at 300, magnification 300, at 1,000, and also at 3,000. And here we already see the the river patterns that are for the hydrogen fracture. When we go to the dark blue one, here we see the transition zone. Here we see the, the hydrogen fracture, and here the, the ductile fracture, also the ductile, how is it called, ductile force fracture. Yeah. And when we go to the last one, here we see also the, the brittle one as, as the, 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 the light blue one, as I told you before. So, yeah. That's so that's our limit, the, the room temperature at dry hydrogen is the limit for this material. And when we come to the conclusion, so the, the quench and tempered one is suitable for, for gas storage, even if the presence of H2S and CO2, when we have the, the, quenched, the quenched material, their highly susceptibility to hydrogen embrittlement due his higher hardness and also strength, and the most critical condition are CO2 plus H2S containing gas in combination with the chloride containing brine. But the application limit for the quenched one is even dry hydrogen gas at room temperature. And that's more severe condition than the higher temperature compared to the literature that we should see more hydrogen uptake. Yeah. So that's our consortium of my project. Geostalk in France is the, the leader of that. And yeah, now I'm open for your questions. Thank you.